Alex Berenson? Yeah. He got reinstated. I know. That's kind of he a new... one in court because he was correct. You look at the data, what he was saying has all been proven in terms of studies and data that has been accumulated over the course of the last two years on COVID vaccines and lockdowns and all these different things. He was correct. Found out now that the White House actively contacted Twitter and tried to get him banned. And right. now he's going right. to sue the White House. That these are not private companies just do, just engaging in regular... Co- these are like, they become state actors. Yes. When you have the government behind them saying, okay, it'd be unconstitutional for us to block this speech ourselves, but we can outsource it to this privately owned third party and they can do it. They can't do that. Right. That's still considered government censorship. So that become, that, that's where it becomes like a First Amendment issue beyond just you know saying these are private companies that can do whatever they want. Right, like what happened with the Hunter Biden laptop thing. Right, right. I mean, that is an egregious right. assault on reality. We deserve to have all the information at our disposal right. in terms of like what is actually going on, what, what has been done, is there evidence of corruption? And if there's evidence of corruption and it's censored by a company that is obviously not just in, in contact with uh, the current administration and you know the previous Democratic Party, but it also what what they're doing is working with them. Mm-hmm. They're they're doing their bidding, and that's where it gets really weird because it is so biased in one perspective, right. and they're not just uh, objectively disseminating information based on whether or not it's been proven to be true. No, they're suppressing information that's true because it, it fucks with what they their desired result. Going to be reporting on a study from Thailand looking at uh, complications after Pfizer vaccine. Thailand study preprint cardiovascular effects of the mRNA COVID-19 vaccine in adolescents. Now, I was actually taken aback by these figures these very high levels and the implications of this so that's what this study is about if you want to stay ekg abnormalities uh, rhythm abnormalities uh, labs differences etc all of them together 29.24 percent nearly 30 percent had something reported of some cardiovascular problem in this uh, age group ranging from tachycardia palpitations to myopericarditis which of course is potentially serious you should be taking cognizance of straight away uh, with, with a view to changing their guidelines as an emergency based on this data. In terms of the cardiac effects, all of them, of the children. Why haven't a prospective study been done by uh, the drug companies post-release on this? Why hasn't it done been done by the CDC or any others of our highly reputable institutions? Why are we forced to take this data from Thailand? How come Harvard didn't do this study? Or the Mayo Clinic or Duke. It says something that we have to rely on a Thailand group of investigators to generate data that could have been generated in one of a thousand hospitals in the United States. 314 were recruited into the study. They lost about 13 on the way. So they've got an analysis of 301. Now, this is um, not as big a sample size as we would like to see, but it's still a pretty good sample size. And it's 301 bigger than any prospective study done in the United States the United Kingdom or Europe to our shame. This is something that is really important. For one child's case, that child had no biomarker raised, so you could say that everything was fine, but the child had pericardial effusion. That is, they had accumulation of fluid around the heart. This was subclinical. Subclinical. Therefore, they wouldn't be experiencing clinical features. This subclinical is very, very important. That means American children who are getting the vaccine, some of them have no symptoms. No one is saying you should never vaccinate anyone ever. No one is saying that we want to vaccinate people as safely as possible. We want to protect adolescents and young men as safely as possible. The risk benefit to them for the third dose, fourth dose, fifth dose, who knows how many doses will come, might be different than an 85 year old. And the idea that my mum is getting essentially the same advice as adolescent young men is just incredible that this goes against the fundamental principles of individualization of medicine the whole point is that we treat people holistically and individually not as populations covid vaccines uh, are safe effective and free i mean is the cdc's reputation ever going to recover after this you read the cdc materials and 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 it's there's some superb materials there on a massive range of diseases but they're just losing so much credibility over this one single issue. Why do they keep saying this? Why do they keep saying this when there's so much evidence to say that particular groups' vaccines aren't safe? Are they effective? Have they prevented the 
pandemic of BA4, BA5 that we've just had? No. Why do they keep saying this? Yes, vaccines are good at preventing hospitalisation in those that are at increased risk. But the risk-benefit an analysis now of an 80-odd-year-old woman, young adolescent male now in 2022, they're just not comparable. Not comparable at all. I would call for uh, an urgent response from CDC and the NHS in response to this data from Thailand. And I would also call for prospective studies to be done. But why haven't we done prospective studies before in the UK? And in the States and in Canada and in all our clever, sophisticated Western countries. But the Thais have done and uh, we can benefit from their uh, data. And if this could save uh, some lives, that would be that would be good.